Are you ready to add a really natural phrasal verb to your vocabulary that's going to help you sound like an advanced English speaker? Because that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. And you're going to learn this phrasal verb naturally by seeing a native English speaker use it both in written and spoken English. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4esenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new video. Now, let's dive in with this lesson. I'm going to teach you a really great phrasal verb that you can add to your vocabulary. Now, first a question for you. Did you see my video yesterday? Because in my video yesterday, I taught you an idiom. And I taught you an idiom by seeing a post that a native English speaker posted on Facebook. So this was the post. And the idiom was to be in over your head, okay? Now this is important because the phrasal verb I'm going to teach you today is actually from the comment that someone wrote on this post. So just in case you didn't watch my video yesterday, I'll just briefly explain that the idiom to be in over your head is when you feel like a task or a problem or a situation is too complex or too advanced for you, okay? So you feel like you don't have the knowledge, the skills, or the ability to handle that task, problem, or situation. And because of that, you feel overwhelmed. It's not a positive feeling when you feel like you're in over your head, you're overwhelmed. Okay, and that's exactly how this person feels because of their online course. They feel it's too advanced, difficult, or complex for them, so they feel overwhelmed because they're in over their head. Now, let's take a look at the comment section of this Facebook post, okay? So this is what someone wrote as advice in the comment section. Now, look closely, pause the video if you need, because there's a really awesome phrasal verb in the comments right here. And this is the phrasal verb that I'm going to teach you today. Can you see it? Can you see that phrasal verb? Now, the phrasal verb is to break something down, okay? To break something down. And here, the something is the it break it down and you're going to see it used where the something is it because the something has already previously been mentioned and in this case the something is the online course okay creating an online course that's the it break it down break your online course down now this is such a common phrasal verb. Native English speakers use it all the time. And because of that, I've already taught this phrasal verb to my students in the Finally Fluent Academy. So I already have a detailed explanation of this phrasal verb available. So I'm going to share that with you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump onto my computer and first you're going to hear this phrasal verb break something down, okay? You're going to hear it by a native English speaker. And then I'm going to explain exactly what it means to break something down, and you're going to see this phrasal verb in lots of natural example sentences. So by the end of this, you'll know exactly how to use the phrasal verb break something down. So let's jump onto my computer and start the explanation. In this segment, we highlight a business that's just doing things right, and then we break down how to apply those smart lessons to whatever you're working on. In this segment, we highlight a business that's just doing things right, 
and then we break down how to apply those smart lessons to whatever you're working on. In this segment, we highlight a business that's just doing things right, and then we break down how to apply those smart lessons to whatever you're working on. So here in bold, you can already see two phrasal verbs. Now, working on, I'm sure you already know this one, so I'm not going to explain it, but I do want you to notice, even when I don't explain specific expressions, I still want you to notice what preposition the verb needs, okay? So this phrasal verb is you work on something. So already you know how to use this in a sentence because using the incorrect preposition is a very common mistake, okay? So you can just write that down so you have it in your notes. And now we're going to look at this phrasal verb break down. To break something down, this means to take something large and complex and divide it into smaller pieces or sections. This is a very useful phrasal verb and I'm sure you'll use it in your everyday speech. Now notice here, this is a separable phrasal verb. So let's look at an example sentence. I can say, let's break this down and think about it strategically. Okay. So here, what is the this? Hmm, let's break this down. So maybe it's this report that they're working on, okay? And this report has so many different facts and figures and statistics, and it might be quite overwhelming if you look at the entire report. So instead, we're going to break it down. So we take something large, the entire report, and we break it down into smaller sections, okay? And then we just look at one section at a time. So it makes it a lot easier to learn and you become instantly less overwhelmed when you take something large and you break it down. Here's another example. Let's break this down and just focus on the marketing piece. So this could be a good recommendation. You take your entire project. So here, maybe this is sales, marketing, advertising, accounting, administration, communications. So you have all these different elements, but in this meeting, you're going to break it down, the this, the project, and you're just going to focus on the marketing piece. And notice how we use piece, because this looks like a pie, right? And we use a piece of the pie. So, oh, here's a piece for you. And that's why I'm using piece here. Another example, if you feel overwhelmed, just break the problem down and solve one piece at a time. So again, just one piece, focus on this, ignore the rest, and then once you check, you solve this, then you put all your attention on this piece, check, and then you move on, check, and this way you break it down break it down and you feel less overwhelmed. So notice here I've been using the pronoun this, you can say it as well, really doesn't matter. And but here I'm saying the problem. So the project, the problem, the report, you can break down many different things. There's really no limit to what you can break down as long as it's large to begin with. So break the problem down. Now this is separable, right? So I can also say, just break down the problem, break the problem down. They're the exact same. Of course, when it's a pronoun, it has to go here. It's the only place. So this is a very good phrasal verb. You can use it for advice to somebody. If somebody is feeling stressed out or overwhelmed, you can say like, hey, let's just break the problem down and solve one piece at a time.
In this segment, we highlight a business that's just doing things right, and then we break down how to apply those smart lessons to whatever you're working on. All right, so welcome back. Now you know exactly how to use the phrasal verb to break something down. So let's go back to our original post. So now you can see that the original poster felt really overwhelmed because the online course was too complex, too difficult. They didn't have the skill or the knowledge, okay? So as advice, the person suggested you take that online course and you break it down into individual sections. And then you just take that one section at a time. And that's a way for you to ah, feel more relaxed, right? Because all of a sudden this thing that seemed very overwhelming, you only have to do this much. You can handle that. And this is exactly what you can do with your approach to learning English. If you take a look at all the verb tenses, all the phrasal verbs, all the expressions, the pronunciation, all the grammar rules. If you look at that at one time, you're going to feel like you're in over your head, right? But if you just break it down and focus on mastering verb tenses, mastering common idioms, improving your pronunciation, and just one thing at a time, break it down, take it one thing at a time, Ah, you're going to feel nice and relaxed. And that's the approach that you can use for learning English. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now, before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4isenglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. All right, look at you, a new idiom, a new phrasal verb added to your vocabulary, sounding so fluent and natural now. Don't stop there, check out this video, and don't forget about this video, and maybe